Hello everyone, and welcome back to more The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. And in this episode, we're actually going to be going onward off uh, to the mountains or so, just to make things a little bit easier. But, do I actually want to do one thing first to begin with? Honestly, no, because I mean, otherwise I'm going to be delaying it once more, and I kind of, I really just want to get on with mainly just, you know, getting on with the main story in the game instead of doing all the side quests, because I'm trying to find an evenly balanced, you know, quite a series for what I'm actually making progress on and stuff. And I think I went out the wrong way, actually, but, uh, whatever. I mean, it's fine to sometimes just take a stroll through this sort of area, because, um, this will actually lead me to tell you about something or so which you might have found about this game. You see, if you've ever watched uh, Chugga Conroy's LP of this game, you may have noticed that compared to my one, it runs an awful lot faster. Like, particularly, you know, when you do, like, the song of Soaring, the music is actually in time as soon as you literally warp out of the place, whereas mine is slightly slower. The reason why it does this, honestly, is because it's due to the, uh, hertz and, uh, what's it, the refresh rate or so. Um, in other words, you know, basically, in America, you see, your game's, like, running 60 hertz. Our ones in the UK, they run at 50 hertz only. And even like for the Wii U ports, they sadly only run at 50 hertz. Why Nintendo didn't decide to upscale them at 60? I don't know, because that actually would have looked a hell of a lot better, because then it would perform, you know, even better than it ever did on the original N64, in a way. And plus, at least on the N64 version, you know, there isn't any input lag or anything, just something I've experienced. Again, maybe that's because it's due to like the 50 hertz refresh rate. But I don't know. I just thought I'd point that out though, because uh, when I was looking at Chaka Comrades, like, footage of this, as well as just, you know, every American version of this game. I noticed that Link ran, uh, Link ran faster and stuff, and just, you know, everything just ran a lot faster than it usually did. But that's the reason why, and there's not really a lot I can do about that unless I modified my Wii U and stuff, but I, I'm not gonna do that, it's fine. I mean, I live in the UK, and this is pretty much how every gamer in the UK had to deal with things, you know. While America had 60 hertz, we sadly had 50 on some occasions. But still. Anyways, right, so, now we're actually going onward to the next area, so, where if I do this thing with Tattle, she will say, up here, take a look at this. I bet if you had a weapon like, uh, that was strong enough, one shot from it could pierce right through this. Well, it might take two shots. Indeed, yes, and if you remember or so, that, oh my god, really, I haven't got any arrows for this? Well, goddamn, really? I'm actually literally gonna have to thrash around for arrows now, am I? Anything else? Okay, you know what, actually, since there's a Dodongo right here, I'm literally gonna try and take this out. In fact, have I actually got a Deku stick with me? Uh, no, said I haven't, but that's fine. I mean, I can take it out just as well with my sword, really. So, I'll just go and do that, because every time you defeat a Dodongo, you will get, uh, 50 rupees in return, you know? So, it's kind of worth it, in a way, because I just want mainly want to collect as much rupees as I can, and then deposit them in the bank. However, I will admit that when you do actually get over a thousand rupees, the guy does give you another gift, but the gift is very disappointing, honestly. It's almost like a troll kind of gift, if you ask me. But still. I mean, they're not too bad to defeat, honestly, the Dongos. They're kind of the same thing in Ocarina of Time, really. Except, you know, in Ocarina of Time, there was this huge Bosch. Uh, a Bosch? Yeah, a huge Bosch, apparently. No. A huge boss um, that you found in Dodongo's cavern and stuff. In fact, it's actually been a long time since I've played Ocarina of Time, to be honest. How fitting. <laughs> Considering they both say the word time in them. Alright. Also, I've made this a bit harder for myself, really, because ideally, I usually like to just Z target or so with a uh, tattle. And then she'll automatically just lock onto it for me, so then I'll just shoot it anyway, regardless. But as soon as you, you know, press up or so for Tattle to give you information, it disappears and she never does it again, so you have to aim at it manually. I don't know, it's just a little tip for speed running strats and stuff, I suppose, but still. Okay, so, welcome to a new area in the game. Finally, it's about time, right? <laughs> I mean, it's been a while since we uh, finished Woodfall and stuff, but... I mean, like I was saying, that's pretty much how the LP is going to go most of the time. Like, depending on what items I have after I've cleared the temples and stuff, that is when I'm going to try and do as much as possible in Clock Town. So, you know, the same thing will happen or so when I eventually do the snow area as well. Okay, what are you going to say about this? This is no good! If we could just blast these snowballs out of the way, we could get through. Uh, I do have a solution to that. I mean, I suppose we could re use, like, normal bombs to get through. But, to be honest, uh, I think it's a lot easier just to do this, really, because then it saves me wasting one of my bombs, because I believe I'm going to need 
uh, quite a lot of bombs later for this. And oh god, here we are with the blimmin' C button problems again. Still, hopefully I won't cause too much hassle in this or so because, like I was saying, mainly the problems. It oh, what the hell was that? That was really weird. Who were? That's never happened. Um. You know, it mainly gave me problems also for trying to aim and be accurate or so, because trying to do that with lag is pretty difficult. But of course, trying to hit enemies and platforming around, unlike Zelda usually, I don't mind it for that kind of thing, to be honest. Anyway, I want to read this sign though, because I don't think I did this actually. Mountain village ahead. Beware of blizzards and deep snow. Goron should be able to break through snow boulders easily. Ah, cool. Maybe that hints at a certain thing we're going to become later in the game or so. And honestly, that's probably like my favourite creature that we do become. And you'll see what I mean when we get to it or so. Because there's a couple of things that I really want to point out. Particularly uh, proof of talking about... You know when we first got into the Southern Swamp and I said that the music is remixed? Um, if you listen to it in the background while I'm talking or so, because I'm going to have to avoid copyright while talking over this, sadly. Um, you should notice that it is kind of like a snowy sort of version, you know, compared to Southern Swamp. So that's what I mean. Every area that you go to in this game has its some sort of remix or at least, you know, alternative version to it or so. Like, even when we get to other areas and stuff, it's the same sort of tune going on, but it just suits the area for what it's supposed to be. And I love it. Like I was saying, it gives me a very strong Banjo-Kazooie feel. Whoa! Up here, up here! I am sorry to bother you from such a high place, but I am very hungry and I have gotten stuck here. Oh, that's a shame. I, I kind of want to know more about you though. Oh, it's so cold. I am so very hungry. I don't think I'm going to make it. I just want to eat once more before I die up here. Something tough and hard to chew. I cannot forget that flavor. So that basically hints at a certain side quest that we're going to be doing later on in the game. And I believe this was kind of a reference to the very first Zelda game, where you had to basically give a mutton to one of uh, the monsters. I think it was Grumble Grumble? Or so, at least that's the dialogue it said anyway. Mountain smithy ahead. We sharpen any sword. We work hard, so your sword worked hard for you. I'm kind of curious, actually, so I'm going to go into here and just see what they mean by this. However, we can't really do much about this at the minute, though, because, whoa, uh, they'll explain. Arr! Shut up! Just when I was having a good dream. Um, okay, I clicked it, there we go. Oh, welcome to the Mountain Smithy, where we take our time to make a good point. I am Zabura, the owner. Pleased to meet you. And this thing always makes a noise in the background. I love this character. These, just, you know, these two characters here. Shut up over there! That huge fellow is my assistant, Gabora. He's all brawn and about as smart as a Deku stick. <laughs> Say, did you come to have your sword sharpened? Unfortunately, we're not doing any business right now. It's because of this abnormal cold snap we've been having. See? Our herb has been frozen over. The way things are going now, I won't be able to do any business until spring. If I could just do something about that frozen herb. Eh? What's that? You say if we had hot water, we could melt the ice off the herb? Don't act like you know what you're talking about, you Deku stick. Oh, he believes a rumor that says long ago they were hot springs somewhere in the mountains near here. Bah, I don't believe such rubbish. Yeah, so we can't really do a lot about this place at the minute, given the fact that, you know, they're basically saying that spring needs to come. In other words, it basically means when the place is saved, because it is forever covered in snow, and that's a problem, really. Particularly for that Goron over there, given the fact that he's always hungry, you know? And conveniently, there is actually a owl statue over here, so I'm happily going to hit that. Anytime you see those, by the way, just hit them, okay? As soon as you literally hit them or so, that acts as basically a teleportation point. So you don't really have to go up to them and literally save, at least I don't think, anyway. I kind of want to double check, just in case if I'm wrong about that myself. Um, oh wow, really? Freaking hell. Okay, let's just go to this, and I'm going to use the Song of Soaring <laughs> with my bomber's mask on. That actually looks really weird, but kind of funny in a way. Hopefully, um, it should show the place where I am right now. Yeah, see, that is his mountain village, so yeah, all you literally need to do is just hit him once, and then they count to it. That's cool. Because I honestly thought to begin with, also, you literally had to save at them in order for them to activate properly. But, it turns out not. And I prefer that, to be honest. Now, while this place may look kind of huge and a little bit confusing to begin with, I mean, it's kind of like that when you first play this, to be honest. It's not that bad once you know where to go, really. 
Goron Village ahead, beware of the White Wolfos. Oh yeah, those new enemies. Because if you remember before where I fought one of the Wolfos um, outside the uh, the Southern Swamp, we're going to be coming across one of them here. And honestly, they're no different really. As long as you follow my tactic going on, where if, when they strike, as long as uh, you hit them at the back, everything will be fine. Honestly, it's really not that complicated. So like this one right here, he'll eventually attack. Then I'm just going to jump slash and that's it. It's dead. Honestly, it's really not that complicated. Also trying to find out the best strategy to defeat them. And this is with the Kokori sword as well, you know. This is with a downgraded sword because we're going to be upgrading our one at some point later on. Okay, right, so I kindly would like to hit this balloon though in order to get Tingle down so that then I can buy the map to this area because this will be helpful or so. In fact, one thing I kind of really should have done is the whole trading thing going on, but... I don't know really, is it actually worth it? It kinda sorta is, I suppose. But um, I'm debating which one to do first, to be honest, because um, I could just move on and do the main quest, but then again, I, if I try and do the extra side quest, that'll be steering away from the main story, and like I was saying, you know, I'm trying to keep some sort of balance going on, and that would kinda destroy it in a way. Also, sometimes he tells you to not steal these words, and sometimes he doesn't. It's kinda a bit randomized, to be honest. Well, now that I'm here at least, I suppose I might as well at least show it off, I guess, since I'm right here. So if I go onwards to this sort of new area, we're greeted to this location, which is, oh, just Goron Village, fair enough, fine. <laughs> I thought it was going to tell me, uh, you know, like basically do like a cinematic panning around the area as it usually does, but it doesn't seem to do it for some reason. It's cold. Being the gatekeeper in this cold is hard. Do you want to enter the Goron Shrine? Um, honestly, yeah, I don't see why not. I haven't really been to this place as a human. Then I'll open the door with a ground, or Goron Pound, a ground pound. Yeah, apparently this is Mario 64. I'm going to close it right away so it doesn't get cold inside. So hurry up and get in. Are you ready? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I didn't really expect this guy to be here right now. So usually he's like rolling around in the snowball and then you have to activate it or at least just rescue him and then do it that way. But yeah, cool. The door's already open, I'm going to close it right away, so hurry up. Indeed, I kind of want to get a move on them when it comes to this kind of thing. Cool. Because I don't know what happens if you literally speak to them all as a uh, human or so. Because now we're greeted to this sort of area, which is pretty goddamn annoying to begin with. Because you'll just constantly hear this baby crying. It's almost like it's Yoshi's Island or something, you know? At least that's what it reminds me of. Anyway, that's all I pretty much remember for my experience of playing Yoshi's Island, so just constant babies crying, oh my god. It was a great game though, I love Yoshi's Island. I wish someone would do something. Uh, I can feel it pounding in the back of my head. I feel the same way really, and I'm listening for this through headphones too. You look, you look like you're doing fine despite all this noise. I can feel it in my gut, it's echoing in my empty stomach. Ah, uh, boy, brilliant. Yeah, so this baby is just going to continuously keep crying in this area, annoying the hell out of everybody. However, there is a reason. And it's actually kind of emotional and sad, if you ask me, really. And um, why is it sad? You'll find out later, really, because I mean, if I just tell you now, that kind of just ruins the surprise, doesn't it, really? I mean, I say it's all emotional and stuff, and then just, if I just told you what it is, you'd be like, oh. <laughs> right, and, and then when it actually happens, you'll be like, oh, it's this. <laughs> yeah, there's like no surprise factor or anything going on. So what's the point? Anyways, I want to speak to every single one of them just to be sure. This is the room of the Goron tribe's elder. Do you have some kind of business with the elder? Unfortunately, he's out. Since the elder is gone, his son won't stop crying. I wish someone would do something. Ah, oh boy. Okay, right. So, let's just have a word with uh, some more of these guys, because I don't know, just like I said, I like to talk to NPCs because I'm weird. Oh, I can feel it pounding in the back of my head. Oh, God, make it stop, man. We're at our wit's end. The elder went to Snowhead and doesn't seem to be coming back. Now his son is so lonely that he won't stop crying. It keeps getting colder outside, and inside we're so cold we could freeze. But how about we actually have a word with the baby itself? I mean, let's see why not. Yeah, basically it's missing its daddy or so, so we actually need to go and find daddy in order to stop this thing from crying. And hopefully put it at bay or so, because this is actually really annoying me. I remember when I first was playing this or so on my practice file while doing this. Even just hearing this for a speaker was enough to I mean, agitate me. I was like, oh my god, shut the hell up. 
blues. Jesus Christ. Also, wow, that was kind of weird. Because I did the roll and hit my sword out. He, he hit, like, the pole or something. That was kind of absurd, but never mind. Anyways, so yeah. I got all that done or so, mainly to help me out. Because as long as you literally talk to the baby as well as the Gorons around them, telling them about what's happened, that makes doing a certain thing later on a hell of a lot more easier. However, we're about to encounter a character that some people hate, some people like. I, for one, have mixed feelings with this git right here. But anyway, let's go see him and what, see what he has to say. Ho ho ho, we meet again, fairy child. Have my stone statues been of help? Yeah, I have, actually. Well, it seems you may have the strength to change the fate of this land as I had expected. But the road ahead is even more challenging. Many trials await you. Please watch over these Gorons around you. Their land is doomed to be smothered in snow and ice cream. Ah, uh, ice cream? And ice forever. It will become a land where no living can survive. With our courage and determination, you surely will collapse from the extreme conditions. But if that courage and determination burns brighter within you, then that's another story. So, will you proceed? Uh, yeah. Okay. You already told me why, but okay. Hoot! You are a child of many strengths. Well, perhaps you do have enough strength to change the fate of this mountain after all. I shall take you to the air now, flying toward that shrine across the way, so follow behind me. Do not be daunted by appearances. Instead, let your feelings guide you, and the true path shall open before you. Are you ready? Follow behind me. Now, this is kind of a cool thing going on, really. Where, like he was saying, don't let the appearances of... I don't know, I forgot what he said, really. Crap. <laughs> Basically, you know, in other words, if you see stuff that looks kind of strange, don't be daunted by appearances. In this case, the little feathers that he's releasing from him, we literally need to use those as platforms, and I swear this is slightly different compared to how it was when I played it in my practice file or so. Maybe it's randomized for like how he puts the, uh, the feathers down? Because I swear it was different. I don't know, really. But what I can suggest, really, is don't forget you are like literally stepping on ice platforms so you will slip and slide about the place so as soon as you jump uh, pull backwards to ensure that you don't literally carry on running and then jump forward and fall off the edge you know ho 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 I have certainly been assured of your courage and determination from here on you must not be fooled by appearances you must rely on your feelings now enter the shrine something that will aid you in your quest lies within use that item when returning from here I see, thank you very much, Kepora Gebora. Jesus, though, I do have mixed feelings with you, I must say. Yeah, so, we're gonna be given this item or so, which you may recognize in Ocarina of Time. In fact, a lot of the things from this game reuse stuff from Ocarina of Time, if I'm going to be honest. But honestly, that's a good thing, really, considering this one was acquired much, much later in Ocarina of Time. This one can be acquired straight from the beginning. And, well, let's just go see and find out what it is, really. Indeed it is! We got the lens of truth. Gaze for it to see mis uh, mysteries that are invisible to the naked eye. Cool. Seeing the truth drains magic power, so tap the button again to stop looking and uh, using that magic. Yeah, which reminds me, there's actually a little strategy or so that I can recommend. Uh, this uses that magic. However, you can just literally repeatedly put it on and off, which is... Oh god, this is going to be a pain in the ass, isn't it, for the freaking thing going on? Well, whatever, fine. But if you just lightly tap it or so, you know, just repeatedly press the button, you're able to put it on and off, and it doesn't drain much of your magic meter, so just keep note of that, you know? And, uh, what can I do or so? One thing I am kind of curious about, really, is bombing every area in this place, because, I mean, I have 30 bombs, and I could have used my blast mask on one of them, I suppose, but just, I don't know, I think it's just a little bit better to use my bombs, because I haven't really used them that much in this LP, to be honest. Alright, cool. So, you'll notice that... Oh, wait, there's a chest right here. Fair enough. Cool. If I open this one, we will get... Oh, wow, we actually get 50 rupees. Bloody hell. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Jesus. Um, but if I put this on, I believe somewhere in this room, it will show... Yeah, you see that? There's a secret little chest right here, which reveals it when I do the thing. Oh, my God, I'm about to get hit by a skull chuli, aren't I? Or at least a skull chula, I don't know. But at least we got 20 rupees. Run out the way, Link. Jesus. Never mind. Fine. What happens if I literally kill it, though? I don't think I've ever done that, really. So, you know, even some enemies in this particular area are invisible. However, the Zeg targeting kind of gives it away. 
<laughs> because I was just able to kill it in one hit. And the arrow actually stayed in the wall then for a second. That was kind of cool, really. But, um, yeah. So that's pretty much all uh, the Lens of Truth actually does. It mainly just reveals things, and it isn't used that much in this game. I mean, once it's used to find those platforms and a certain thing later on through this mountain, that's pretty much one of the only times that we use it, really. In fact, you'll notice that those feathers there are gone now, and you're like, well, how the hell do we get back here? Well, we use the Lens of Truth, because it basically reveals where they are. And yeah, I swear, it is actually literally different compared to what it is. Oh my god, that was mistimed like crazy. Jesus, let me try that one again. Hold on. I want to just try and keep taking it off and on, though, just to be on the safe side, because it does drain a lot of your magic. Why did you do a small leap right there, Link? Jesus. <sighs> okay, here we go again. Ready? This time I'm going to keep on walking this way and do that. There we go. Nicely done. And brilliant. Cool. And what is this thing right here, you might ask? Um, I reckon at a time like this, we're going to find out in the next episode or so. So in the next episode of The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, we're going to be finding out what the hell this shadow thing is right here. It will be something. Obviously. I don't know what that was, but still. So take care, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. And I will see you in the next one, as per usual.